my brothers and sisters in Christ, I was just given another dream, it's another warning dream from the heart of God, straight from Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Right before I woke up, these words were shouted. The words were, come out of Babylon. I'm going to share the dreams with you in just a moment. But this is another warning dream before God pours out his judgments upon the apostate churches. So please take it to the Lord. Test all spirit. I know without a shadow of a doubt is a warning dream from the Lord. He is once again out of his mercy and great love for us, making his appeal to be reconciled with him to come out of Babylon the apostate churches that's bound up in sins and fornications against him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 says that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. If you guys have been following my channels, uh, May 16th, I believe it was 2019, when the Lord gave me a dream of him, the ancient of days, high and lifted up, in his throne on his throne with lightning and um and you know thunder rolling and lightning and he shouted out the ancient of day jesus christ shouted it out um though your sins are red as scarlet i will make you white as snow so the ancient of days the lord jesus christ is making his appeal calling all of mankind to be reconciled to god before he pours out his judgment and this dream is telling us that judgment is about to be poured out. The seven plagues is about to be poured out upon the apostate churches, the harlot churches. And I'm going to show you and share with you the dreams that he showed me this morning. And this is from Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Revelation 17, 1 through 2 says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Revelation chapter 18 verse 2 to 4 says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. This is a warning dream that God is about to pour his vials of judgment upon the apostate harlot churches that professes his name but commits all sorts of spiritual fornication and even physical fornication, all types of idolatry and abominations against him, but yet professes his name. All right, here's my dream. Please take it to the Lord, for we know in parts and prophesy in parts. Amen. I was sitting inside a church building, ready for worship. My husband was next to me. Lo and behold, out on stage, I see my oldest handsome teenager son, Jaden. He's 16, almost 17. And he was on stage with a sword. And then another friend of his came out also with a sword. And they were having some type of sword dueling contest show. I was shocked. For one, my Jaden is very shy, so he would not want to be on stage for anything. But two, I was there ready to worship the Lord, not for a show. 
but because I love and adore my son so much, I pulled out my phone camera and began to videotape his sword dueling contest show with his friend, like all proud mamas would do with their children when they're on stage performing. Then after their little segment of show ended, out came another show. This time, it was nearly a naked woman covered only in a small black apron with her buttocks and chest and body, legs, everything exposing except her private part in the front. And she and this man was, were dancing to some type of salsa music for the people in the church. My mouth dropped and my blood boiled in rage and I stood up and shouted, you guys, please forgive me, but this is what happened in my dream and I can't alter it. I shouted, what the hell is going on? This is not the church of Jesus Christ. This is the synagogues of Satan. You are all not worshiping Jesus. You are worshiping Satan in the name of Jesus. Then I saw people of different faith and ethnicity, Indians, Hinduism, Muslim, and other religion as well. Churchgoers that I know, and I saw a church leader on stage with his hands folded in front of him, telling everyone inside the congregation to let us be considerate of one another and not do anything to offend another person's religion. Basically, he was telling his congregation, let's just all get along. Can we all just get along? But I was utterly offended because I walked up the aisle shouting with all my might, you are not serving Jesus Christ in this church. You are serving Satan and yourself. This is not the church of Jesus Christ. But as I shouted as loud as I could, the loudness of the music and the flashing lights in this church service were so bright and so loud that I could barely hear my own self scream and the congregation were totally engrossed in their shows and entertainment and no one seemed to hear a word that I was screaming in there. They were deaf, dead, and dumb and were completely engrossed in the entertainment and program lights music in their services. I saw a man that I used to go to church with, one of these apostate churches that I was under for a few years and he was sitting there in like a very formal tuxedo type, uh, black and white, um, nice shirt, uh, black pants, and just totally hypnotic um, and smiling from ear to ear um, watching these shows and in their programs. I left the building feeling defeated, discouraged, walking down a long highway with seemingly a small bag, a small luggage of some sort. I was on a journey, a lonely journey by myself some to go somewhere. Then I saw a black car filled with men in black clothing, and I was made to know they were coming for me. So I dropped my bag and ran away from the car. I saw the car stopped, and I saw one man in the black uh, clothing came out of the car to come chase me down. I was made to know he had perverted, wicked desires to capture me and take me for himself. I ran towards a home where I saw my older son and my former husband, and I think my second son, Micah, too, but I'm not sure, 100% sure if Micah was there, but I know Jaden and uh, my ex-husband was there. I cannot remember any more details after this except the loud words that shouted, come out of Babylon, and that's when I woke up. There were no doubts in my heart that it was a warning dream for all of God's people who professes his name, Jesus Christ, to come out of the apostate churches that are filled with abominations, falsehood, and sins. So in my research and study time this morning, I found a very awesome article. It is a little long, so if you would like to listen, please um, be patient and follow along. If not, you know, you have the freedom to turn off uh, this video. But um, here it is. It's from the endtimesprophecy.org come out of my people uh, website. At a time when the people and leaders of the world are looking for unity between church denominations and religions through this um, interfaith movement, God is calling his people out of it. Will you heed the warning? Revelation 18, 1 through 4, which I've already read. 
And after these things, I saw another angel came down from heaven, having power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried out mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon of the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And this is the message of this dream. Come out, come out of Babylon, the apostate churches, before you receive the uh, plague of her sins, the wrath of God, the judgments of God that's about to be poured out upon these apostate churches, the harlot churches. Now, the majority of people wrongly identify who Babylon is and therefore cannot respond to this urgent message to come out of Babylon. If you look at our Who is the Whore of Babylon page, you will see the mother of harlots is none other than the Roman Catholic Church. But is the pronouncement in Revelation 14.8 and Revelation 18.2 of Babylon now being fallen and becoming the habitation of every foul spirit a pronouncement of the Roman Catholic Church? No, and I will tell you why. The fact that this call is to a body that is become fallen means that at some point it was in good standing with God. Yet the Roman Catholic Church has been in an apostate fallen condition right from the very beginning of the church. So to say that the Roman Catholic Church, Catholic church is now fallen and has become the habitation of devils is just the same as saying that paganism or Hinduism or any other false religion has become fallen. And that, as we know it, is not possible because these false religions have always been the habitation of devils. And since the fall here introduced is a moral one, it must apply to some branch of Babylon besides or outside of the pagan or papel divisions. Is it papel? Papel. I don't know how you say that. For from the beginning of their history, paganisms has been a false religion and the papacy an apostate one. Uriah Smith, Daniel, and the Revelation page 664. The message of Revelation 14 announcing the fall of Babylon must apply to religious bodies that were once... Oh, I meant to play this. Sorry about that. Let's see. Okay that were once pure and have become corrupt. Since this message follows the warning of the judgment, it must be given in the last days. Therefore, it cannot refer to the Roman Catholic Church alone, for that church has been in a fallen condition for many centuries. E. White from The Great Controversy, page 382 through 383. So this specific end time call for God's people to come out of Babylon isn't a specific message for the Roman Catholic Church or any other false religion because the call has always been for people to come out of false religion and to turn to the one true God. No, this call is a spe specific call for God's very own people to come out of a body that has become fallen and has become the habitation of every foul spirit. And what body is that? The fallen Protestant churches the daughters of Mother Babylon. Revelation 17, 5, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And that's what um, the imagery of that nearly naked woman dancing um, in the church uh, was all about. She represented the mother of harlots, um, whoredom, holotry inside the churches. You can see Revelation 17 reveals that Mother Babylon has daughters who will also share in her many sins and plagues. And who are the daughters of Babylon? These can be none other than the churches and institutions which arose from the Roman Catholic Church, the Mother. During the Protest Protestant Reformation, 
the Protestants ran well for a season, but ended up fencing themselves about with creeds, causing them to fail in the advancement of light and truth, and have ended up developing a character as that of their mother, the Roman Catholic Church. All of the various Protestant denominations have retained in their ecclesiastical organizations, worship and doctrines, relics of popery. Most, if not all of the denominations of today should be called churches of the world more than churches of God. The desire for power and worldly gain has infected most, if not all of them. They have ended up making a God of this world and they are no more churches of Christ than their mother, the Roman Catholic Church. Is the condition of the Protestant now called evangelical churches any better than the Jewish church when Christ uttered the words, Woe unto you, hypocrites, Matthew chapter 23, I think not. Thou art found wanting is engraved upon the doors of the churches today, but alas, they proclaim, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, but they know not that they are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Revelation 3, 14 through 22. That's also um, what that uh, woman represent. You know, she was uh, flaunting, uh, thinking that she's rich and all of that. We don't want this, Miss Jennifer. Uh, but she was naked, poor, miserable, wretched, and naked and blind. The prophet Isaiah described the condition of the various churches in the last days when he said, And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Isaiah 4.1 the various Protestant evangelical churches today have taken hold of one man and called themselves by the name of Christian, Christ, and yet they eat their own bread and wear their own apparel. Instead of eating the bread from heaven, the word of God, and living by it, they follow after tradition and the teachings of men and the appetites of their bellies. The first pronouncement of the fall of the Protestant churches came in 1844 when they rejected the light from God, sent to the world through the Advent movement. The prophecy of the 2300 days of Daniel came to its fulfillment in 1844, and those churches which rejected this light and failed to follow Jesus Christ into the most holy place in heaven where judgment was to begin became fallen just as the angel in Revelation 14.8 proclaims. And from there, the various Protestant churches have clung to their creeds and the relics of Rome instead of advancing in truth and light. Slowly but surely, the churches have been piling up the sins and abominations where they have now reached the point of turning back to their mother, the Roman Catholic Church, and are fully embracing her. No longer are the Protestant evangelical churches proclaiming the truth that the Papal Church is that man of sin and antichrist which the Bible speaks of. No, instead, they are embracing that mother of abominations in their ecumenical, I don't know how to say that word, ecumenical movement we have going on today. Not only that, the Protestant churches today are now making an unholy union with the governments of the world. And this, as we saw with the Jewish church of old, spells disaster. So this message, come out of her, my people, is to the people of the fallen Protestant churches. And yes, this message also applies to Catholics because the call to come out of the Catholic church has always applied right throughout history as the Catholic Church has always been in apostasy from its very beginning. But this specific end time call is for those within the various fallen Protestant denominations, which are now fallen and have become the habitations of foul spirits. But notice that God is saying, come out my people. This means that God has people within the fallen churches who are living up to the light they have received. They are living a true faith according to what they know. And once they see the truth of God's word, which the priests and pastors of these fallen churches have been hiding from them, 
Then they will come out and join with God's true remnant people who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Please note, is this just a message to come out of the fallen churches? Is it enough to just separate from these fallen churches? No, this is also a call to get Babylon out of you. Babylon is fallen because of her unity with the world and committing sinful things. So even if you come out of the fallen churches, but still live for the world and continue to do sinful things, then you still be part of Babylon. So a complete conversion is required in our lives. You must be born again by the Spirit of God. Uh, Acts 2.38 This is part of the call to come out of Babylon. When we repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, we will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We must be born again of the Spirit of God to become a part of the family of God. Amen to um, enter heaven and to even hear and understand the things of God. We must be born again. So if the Catholic Church is an apostate church and the various Protestant churches are fallen, who is God's church today? God has a church. It is not the great cathedral, neither is it the national establishment, neither is it the various denominations. It is the people who love God and keep his commandments. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Where Christ is, even among the humble few, this is Christ's church. For the presence of the High and Holy One who inhabiteth eternity can alone constitute a church. Where two or three are present, who love and obey the commandments of God, Jesus there presides. E. White, Manuscript Releases, Volume 17, page 81. Revelation 14, 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they, God's true church, that keep the commandments of God and, and the faith of Jesus. What church is giving this message? Will you come out of her? If you read Revelation 18, 4, you will see that Babylon is guilty of many sins and will receive the final wrath of God before Jesus Christ returns, which are the seven last plagues. And anyone who stays in Babylon stays in sin, whether it be the mother or the daughter churches. They will also receive of the plagues and be forever lost. So this is a vital message to those still in Babylon, those in apostate churches and those living in sins. Are you a member of Babylon, whether it be the Roman Catholic